Welcome to Halloween Hell Night. Yes, it's my favourite night of the year. Halloween. I love Halloween so much. It's my favourite night ever. I look forward to Halloween all year long. I love it. Now, what have we got here? We've got my friend, Ratty. He's really nice, Ratty, aren't you? You're really lovely, Ratty. In fact, you're my only friend, aren't you? Yes, you are. Are you going to spend Halloween with me? He is. He's going to spend Halloween with me. You sit there and enjoy the fun. Oh, ho, ho, my friend Ratty. What else have we got? We've got my friend. <laughs> I love you, Mrs. Witch. She's my friend as well. And we're going to sit down and watch some terrific, scary short films just for you. Happy Halloween. Enjoy. It's me, Tony the Clown. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. Not from the dead, not from the grave. <laughs> we can turn off. Right. I hope you're enjoying your Halloween so far. I hope it's going well. I hope it's spooktacular and fiendishly crazy. It's great. Halloween is the best time of the year. I collect Halloween toys. Look at him, he's nice as well. Little Dracula, more little friends I've got here. I collect everything, I collect body parts. I love human body parts so much. I love them. I collect everything for Halloween. I mean, even my friends love me, don't you? You all love me, don't you? Now, should we sit down, Ratty, and watch this next short? It's a puppet short. Enjoy. We liked that, Mr. Ratty, didn't we? We found it a bit scary though, didn't we? We had to sit behind the cushion for that one. That was a bit scary, Mr. Ratty. What comes next? Well, here's a scary little shoot for you. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Halloween. Halloween who? I haven't got a bloody clue, but sit back and watch this short film.
tree. going to hell. <laughs> What'd you start for? Do you think that's funny, Mrs. Witch? Well, I don't at all. Stay there and be good. Now, this next show is something about people being bullied. I was bullied as a child, wasn't I? Do you know how I got my revenge? Well, sit and watch this short film to find out.
have you hang on by yourself? Oh wait, is it because you have no friends? Leave me alone. Oh, you're just mad because you're fat. Leave me alone or I'm telling. Are you gonna go run to your dad? Oh wait, he's dead in the car accident. That's it, I'm telling. Smell, they make noise, they're annoying. God, I should have been an accountant like my brother told me I should have been. Principal Connors, Jack just met and called me names and talked about how my dad died. Stop! I do not want to hear about your problems. When I was your age, I was told to deal with it myself, and that's what I'm going to tell you. You go and deal with your problems yourself and stop whining to me to fix all your problems. Scram. Fine, I'll take care of it myself. Hey, Jack, you want to go? No, I'm just going to go cut through the woods. Bye. Oh my god, Izzy, what happened? Don't worry, I took care of it myself. What? What? She's off again! This is really scary! This is some kind of paranormal, creepy, crazy stuff! I didn't even go near her! Mrs. Witch started on her own! <laughs> and she stopped on her own as well. That's a bit scary, Mrs. Witch. You're trying to scare me on this Halloween night, aren't you? So next is another short film. This one is called... I don't know what it's called, but it's really scary. It features a man trying to investigate something. Does it? I don't actually know. But this next shot is really scary. Really, really, really scary. Even Mrs. Witch. Do you find it scary, Mrs. Witch? Ah, she does. Sit back and enjoy. <laughs> The Forbidden Hunt. Human prey. <laughs> to rejoice in the breaking of the Prime Commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Sort of makes you horny, doesn't it? Ooh, oh, you can taste the fear. That sickly, sweet fear. The air is thick and just oozing with it. It electrifies. The hair on the back of your arms just bristles. You are in control. You hear the shallow, fast breaths of your prey, like cymbals that complement the thud, thud 
drumbeat of their racing heart. It's the soundtrack that you live for. Every serial killer just needs their own theme song. And this one is yours. All that is within existence ravenously consumes. The lion eats the lamb. The lamb eats grass. The grass consumes rain. And you? You consume the energy of your victim's terror. Base chakra energy. The adrenaline of fight, flight, and fuck. Oh, the very essence of survival of the self and the species. Base chakra energy. It both feeds your soul and invigorates your libido. Oh, why simply eat? when you can get off on it too. Oh, the gods of old were fed from the energy of prayers and the blood sacrifices of their devotees. You deal in death, so you too are a god and shall not be denied. You're not merely playing cat and mouse. This is not simply playing with your food. You need to drain every single drop of fear that your victim has to offer. Oh, you don't want to plunge the knife into their heart prematurely before they've given it all to you. You can't afford to do that. You have to put them through every single ounce of suffering possible first. You want it all. The shamans of old would put on a big show and the people just lapped it up. The press is loving your act and can't get enough. Oh, society might condemn you, but secretly they're loving every single minute, every drop of blood, every dead body. So what if one person is sacrificed when you're keeping billions on this piss-weak little planet going? You help break the mundane drudge of their very existence, their everyday drudgery existence. Oh, you're the one giving them a reason to keep going. They need you. So who cares if one or two insignificance must die? for the good of the masses. Oh, but let, let us not allow our minds to wander. The lion cares not for the opinions of the sheep. We must concentrate on the hunt, on the victim, our prey, our very sustenance. Oh, see the beautiful suffering. Can there be any higher art form than the ballet of snuff? Your reviews are written across the headlines in entrails and bright red gore. <laughs> Your victim has already worked out who you are. And now, let's get up and personal. <laughs> and now it's time for the kill. You really are the master. Or, should I say, the high priestess? The female is always the most dangerous of the species. Kudos on a job well done. This next short film, we're taking a trip back to Halloween, to a Halloween of the past. This is a trip back in time, like a time machine, and we're going back to a different Halloween in a different generation, in a different life, in a different world. Aren't we, Mrs. Witch? Yes, we are. <laughs> Enjoy. This is a story about my uncle. 
a light has. And a sadness. I mean, it's a sad story. Or more, a poignant tale of love. It's a love story. That's the heart of it. Are you both in the mood for love? My uncle takes care of a lighthouse in Devon. I finally went to visit them. My uncle and his wife. He's a bit of a loner. He doesn't like to be disturbed in his work during the evening and night. He and my aunt have a strange relationship. He had asked for my visit. Their house is in a pretty secluded place, overlooking the sea, a small distance from the lighthouse. My aunt never goes down there. These were her instructions. She just does her work and keeps it separate from him and his thing. My uncle has never left Devon since he moved there. I always wondered about his lighthouse work. Apparently he was all the time waiting and asking for my visit. On the nights he came back to the house, he brought with him a silence. He would sit and eat and read. When we first met, I had arrived a day and a half already and hadn't seen him. He just stood before me and stared at me. He held my arms tight. And then he leaned forward and kissed me softly on the cheek. He asked my aunt if I had eaten. And when she said I did, he gave me a faint smile and went to lie down. first night and thereafter, he walked through the kitchen without saying goodbye to either my aunt or I. It wouldn't be seen till the following day. So I didn't get to see him before bedtime. In fact, I rarely saw him or spoke to him. Until one night. It's two nights, actually. Once in the kitchen, it was just before dawn, and the other... You see, my uncle preferred to sit in his chair and watch either my aunt working or me. In fact, he watched me all the time. I was intrigued by my uncle. I always thought him a handsome man. I even had a crush on him when I was young. Apparently he knew this, which is why I didn't visit for so long. It was embarrassing more so when I discovered the crush hadn't left. I found myself getting excited when he watched me. I rarely left the kitchen when he was home. I liked him watching me. My aunt noticed this after a while, but it made things a little awkward. I didn't... I just couldn't control it. I mean, I don't know why. But there was an unspoken language between us. One night, I got up. I wanted to meet him on his return from the lighthouse. I tiptoed into the kitchen, pulled back the lid of the cooker, and sat at the table, close to the heat, waiting. I didn't think I'd see him. Or maybe I did. I sat quietly in the dark, sipping milk, when the kitchen door unlatched. My uncle stood behind the door and called the dog from his corner out into the yard. He came in quietly, 
and closed the door behind him, leaving Jude outside. Immediately he sensed my presence. I mean, it was dark, but he saw me. It was strange. I knew I shouldn't have been up. I shouldn't have seen him. It was his time and I was intruding. Those were the thoughts that ran through my head at the time. He stopped and looked at me, frozen for a few moments. I got up. I just stood still at the table, wearing my nightie. All of a sudden, he came over to me. He took off his coat and wrapped it around me, and then hugged me and held me tightly in his arms. I... He just remained silent. for a moment. I don't know. He repeated in a whisper. I couldn't make the words out exactly. Then he started to stroke my hair. Like he was saying sorry or something. It seemed like he was saying sorry. I decided to follow him to the lighthouse one night. I did the same again. I stole out of my bed and out of the house, and I went with a coat over my pyjamas down to the lighthouse, down to where he was. I mean, I couldn't leave his side now. I mean, I wanted to be close to him ever since he held me, ever since that first look into my eyes. When I got down there, the front door to the building was open, so I went inside and immediately climbed the stairs. I wasn't afraid. I just had to go. I didn't think I'd see him, if he'd be there. I climbed and came upon an open door. I walked to the big open window that lay straight ahead drawn to the moonlight. It was overwhelming, the light on this night. I could see clearly out over the sea, down along the pier. And then I saw the figure of a woman. She was like a haze. It surrounded her. She was floating just above the water. She wasn't standing on anything solid, just floating. And it seemed as if she was waiting. She was looking ahead of her, toward me, toward the window of the lighthouse. It was... And then I heard his footsteps. He was coming up the stairs. I stood, frozen in my position. I didn't nor couldn't hide. He came into the room. I felt him walking up behind me. And then he stopped. I didn't turn around. He stood still for a moment. I don't know if he was watching me, or the lady over the sea. We both stood still for a moment. I couldn't turn to face him. He stood silently. And then I felt his eyes on me. I felt... I suddenly didn't see the lady anymore. But I felt this overpowering sensation all around me. As if... as if he was my lover. I mean, how could he be? And then he left. My heart was aching, and I couldn't stop the pain. I 
I started to cry and I couldn't stop the tears. I whispered his name over and over and over. I felt like I was losing him. Like we were being pulled apart by this inexplicable force. Who was that lady? She had long flowing hair, a long dress. She wasn't even wet. I kept repeating his name over and over. Don't leave me. But it was I who was leaving. I had to see him one more time. I had to see something. So I went to his room. My aunt was on the phone or in the car. I can't remember. I couldn't even hear her. She disappeared to allow me to see this picture. I found a letter in his drawer. A love letter. Written to him by his lover. A name. My name. The letter said things. Arranging to meet down by the lighthouse. It all seemed familiar. It all seemed right. I mean, it said we would be together by the window. Where we would hold each other and make love to each other. Like we always did. My heart ached as I began to cry my tears. I found myself calling him back to me. Asking him to come soon. Telling him that I couldn't stand it alone anymore. To come soon. To come soon. The picture. The picture was of a lady that looked just like me. The funny thing was, I suddenly remembered when it was taken. I mean, I remember the feelings I had when it was taken. Okay, this next shot is a really scary one. It features a little boy, not this small, but a really small little boy who's trick or treating. And after something really good for Halloween, I used to go trick or treating, didn't I? And get sweets and candy and apples with razor blades, all those kind of yummy things. <laughs> treating and I used to go with him. We did have fun. Have you got lots of things you've collected? That's good dear. Right here is a nice drink of orange here yeah? and I've got something special for you. I've got you some nice cake. Hold on I'll get it. There are dear there's a lovely bit of cake for you there. That's right. You enjoy that. Just make sure you drink all of that drink up because it's lovely. 
Oh, come on, dear. Let's go into the garden. You follow me, and we'll go around there. Mind the steps. All right, mind the step. That's it. I've got two big pumpkins out there. If you, you follow me. Be careful you don't fall. Right, mind the set here, dear. Right, you wait till you see my pumpkin. There, look. Look at that. That's smashing for Halloween, isn't it? I'm gonna have my, let my grandson have that. Otherwise, I'd let you have it, but my grandson's gonna have it. He's been looking forward to that. All right, dear. Righty ho. And did you finish your drink? Right, be careful. Have you got many more houses to go to to know it? Yeah? You be careful because it's getting dark. You want to get back before it's dark. to see you. Here he is. This is the one I used to go trick or treating with. He's lovely. He's gone Was he? He was a bit short, but not that short. Mr. Puppet liked it, didn't you? Yes, I like it. Did you like it, Mr. Puppet? Yes, I liked it a lot. He's talking a lot today, but Mrs. Witch is being a bit quiet. <laughs> Mrs. Witch, where is it? She's gone. Mrs. Witch is... Mrs. Witch is broken. And we know how to fix her, don't we? New batteries! <laughs> Mrs. Fitch is back for a Halloween treat for all of us! Because we all absolutely love Halloween, don't we? I've got Mr. Devil, the talking puppet, who doesn't talk much at all. But when he talks, you can't shut him up! And I've got Mr. Ratty, my special friend. He's really nice, Mr. Ratty. And Mr. Ratty's made a new friend, Mr. Devil and Mrs. Mrs. Witch has gone again. We're going to buy some batteries for next Halloween, aren't we? Mrs. Witch, you're going to work this stuff? No, she's not. She's had enough. That's what you get for putting cheap batteries in your blooming witch. <laughs> I'll never do it again. Anyway, it's enough for me. Is it? It's enough for me, really. Enjoy this next show from Mr. Devil. Did you make it? No, he didn't. That's a secret.
Little Molly had a dolly with a face so sweet, so fair, and everyone that saw the toy loved her long blonde hair. She's my best friend, Little Molly would say, but little did people know how it came to be that way. Little Molly read a book, a book of great intent, and off to practice what she learned. One sunny morning she went. She found a girl she'd never liked and spoke a cursed phrase. The girl froze up, her body shrank, her eyes forever glazed. A search was made, the parents grieved, she had forever gone away, and Molly skipped off with her new doll, ready for some play. Yes, Little Molly had a dolly with a face so sweet, so fair. <laughs> Me and Mr. Devil were going to get some candy because we went trick or treating before with those kids. Remember what happened to them? We won't tell anyone, will we? <laughs> and the parents? <laughs> well, let's just say they came to a sticky end in the grave. <laughs> it was ages we took to burn them bodies, wasn't it? <laughs> They can be a bit heavy, but Mr. Devil is very strong, aren't you? Enjoy this next short film. And Mrs. Witch has been very quiet again. I wonder if she's going to watch this with me. Mrs. Witch, she's back. <laughs>
Two potentials. Uh, well, uh, one late tonight. Yeah, I mean, no, well, it's a house party, so I, I don't know how easy it's going to be. Yeah, the usual recipe, yeah. She won't remember much. Yeah, yeah, she'll be ready for tomorrow. She's proper keen. Mm. Hang on, I'm just getting a reply from the little one now. Listen, mate, the other one might be a bit trickier. Um, she's playing hard to get. Maybe, maybe you can take her on your own. I'll give you the in. Dave, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. No. I feel like, no matter how far I go, aimlessly from place to place, I'm standing still. I get close to people and make a connection, but the spectre of my younger self is always there, haunting me, following me threatening to consume me. I know I should move forwards, but the past has a way of rising from the grave and reaching out to me with its bony fingers. As I sit here before you all, I feel the way I want to feel. The person I want to be here, in the here and now. I awaken from the terror that is every single day and I find clarity. This will be our little secret. I worry that when I leave you all and the night takes over, then that scared child will return and I'll be lost again. Every week I... I think it gets a little better. But somehow I always come back. Like a circle, never ending. I'm always here. Hmm. That's... Some really wonderful insight there, Ashley, and I'm sure everyone can agree that we all feel like that sometimes. The key is breaking that cycle and being the person we want to be, or being with the person who can help us find the life we are searching for. Oh, I think I've found that person, Mr. Atkins. I'm just not sure if should go through with it. Well, that's for you to decide. And I know things can look a lot brighter in the way. I think that deserves a round of applause.
we got the address. Oh, we'll check again then. Right, good. Well, if you haven't heard from me by text or by phone by 2am, you know something's gone wrong. No. No, there's no way he remembers me. It was 12 years ago, after all. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be really surprised. Boy, well, you know, it's me. I'll send you that text we agreed on. Thanks, Nancy. I need all the luck I can get. Ashley, come out. Come out! Go away, Josh, you fucking creep! I was kidding, alright? I was fucking kidding. And I was gonna tuck you in and call you an Uber in the morning and. What the hell is going on? is a bit drunk and we're sorting it out and everything's gonna be okay. Can we 
if you open the door, I want you to check that you're okay. Girls, you don't need me hanging around all night, okay? Ashley, I'll, I'll call you in the morning. I'm, I'm sorry for spoiling your night. contacts and now my contacts including all those little girls you've been collecting how do you think i'm stupid enough to get tape raped i wasn't sick i just wanted you to think i was and now i have everything i need you see i've known about you for quite a while josh like fuck have you there's nothing to fucking know Oh, I'm afraid I know you quite intimately. You see, we're old friends, you and I. <laughs> Couldn't have been that memorable. What makes you so special anyway? Did I really mean that little to you? Do they all? Just another notch on the bedpost. I'm afraid I'm not that big on nostalgia anyway. I'm fighting my own demons. Well, let me remind you. 2006. You were 23 years old. You didn't live around here. Neither did I. You followed me a lot back then. Befriended me. Got me smoking, then drinking. Early December. You said you had a Christmas present for me and I followed you into the woods. You made me do things no child should ever have to do. I was 14 years old! <laughs> Well, it's a happy Halloween from me, a happy Halloween from Mr. Devil, and a happy Halloween from Mr. Witch, and a happy Halloween from Ratty, saying I hope you've had the best Halloween ever. And goodbye.
Happy Halloween! <laughs>